world without children. Joe Wyson was a tired and sleepy father who felt like running out of his house. It wasn't that he really had anything big to complain about, just that the twins, Stevie and Donnie were getting on his nerves. I sit down in my easy chair and what happens? Stevie climbs on my right knee, then Donnie gets on my left knee. 30 seconds later Stevie and Donnie are trying to push each other off the knee, and then when I get mad and spank them, they cry so loud it upsets me. He said rather bitterly. What can I do? If I go into the bedroom and try to rest for a few minutes, do you know what happens? Little Bobby starts climbing all over me. There must be some land where a tired daddy can find a little peace. Mrs. Laura Wyson was an intelligent mother and wife. It was just after her husband had dropped and broken the fourth soup plate that she spoke what was on her mind. Why don't you go and visit Dr. Porter? You have fittery nerves. They say he is wonderful. Call him up on the phone and make an appointment. Dr. Hugo Porter was a very thin man who wore very thick eyeglasses. He placed Joe Wyson in a chair and then moved a machine with revolving arms in front of his patient. What kind of a contraption is that? Demanded a puzzled Joe. Some new kind of a toy? Bet my kids would like to play with it. This is no toy replied Dr. Porter. It is the greatest scientific invention of the 20th century. In fact, it is the greatest thing the world has ever seen or ever will see. Now I know less than before, admitted Joe Wyson. How is this going to help me? Patience, my dear patient, this will solve all your problems. It is a wish machine that takes you into any world so that your dreams, hopes, and desires can be transformed into real things," said the doctor. You mean that this contraption can take me away from all my troubles? Said the father as he gazed at the strange thing which looked like a lot of gears and tubes. Most people live in a dream world, explained Dr. Porter. They are not satisfied with the present world and present conditions. They feel there is a better world and that once they can get into it, everything will be fine. I have built this wish machine. It takes you into the world you want to visit. Now take your case. For example, from the information sheet which you filled out, I see you are bothered by your children and probably by your neighbor's children. In addition, you are a tired man and want to rest. This machine will take you into such a world. Your dream world becomes your real world. See if you like it. If you do, then you can remain there. And if I don't? Questioned Joe Wyson. What then? Will I be able to return to this world? The machine has never failed. Replied the doctor, but he did not add one very important bit of information. It had never failed for the simple reason it had never been used before. The tired daddy was going to be the first person to try this machine. Watch the revolving arms. Ordered Dr. Porter. And concentrate on the world you wish to enter. Think of nothing else but that. The arms revolved slowly at first and then increased their speed. A slow hum came from the machine and Joe Wyson felt his eyelids begin to close. Suddenly he became aware he was seated on a park bench. A very old man with a long white beard came up to him. Are you lost? Is there anything I can do for you? I am the official greeter for the world without children. Joe Wyson looked at the man and was about to ask what kind of a gag it was when three other men with long white beards approached the first man. Is he a visitor to our world? Asked one of the old men. We haven't had anyone without a beard for the past two centuries. Maybe he is from a neighboring planet. Have you questioned him? Most venerable Gritos. My name is Joe Wyson. Said the daddy. I live at 231 Elm Street. I was seated in the office of Dr. Hugo Porter about five minutes ago. He told me to concentrate. I am just a tired father and I wanted to get away from my kids. I think I am beginning to miss my twins, Stevie and Donnie. And then there is Bobby. He likes to climb all over me. If it makes you happier to speak and tell us about yourself, 
Then go ahead and do so. Said the most venerable Greedos. Now that you are here with us, we will have to figure out what to do with you. Come and follow us. Joe Wyson arose from his seat and looked around. He noticed hundreds of old men, each with a long white beard seated on benches. What's going on with these guys? He asked. And where are the kids? Yes, sir, where are the kids on roller skates? And where are the kids running up and down the street with water pistols? And where are the mothers looking for their kids? I think you better explain things to him. Ola and historian Heresis. Suggested the most venerable Greedos. It's not difficult to comprehend. Began the old man who evidently was in charge of historical information. This is a world without children. Every time a daddy gets tired, he wishes he could run away from his family. Well, those wishes accumulated over centuries, and they built this world in which you are now a visitor, or perhaps not a visitor, but one to remain with us. There are no children, and there are no women. All you have are men like us who are very old. We were born this way, and our lifespan is just about 357 years. There really is nothing to do but sit in the park in this world. But I am beginning to get hungry. Protested Joe Wyson. And I would like a nice juicy steak with some french fries. And when I am finished, then I want a big hunk of apple pie and some coffee. Can you recommend a good eating place here? Oh my. Lamented the learned historian Herosis. We have no need for food. If you are hungry, you take an energy pill. One of these will last you for about a month. The old man took out a metal box and handed Joe Wyson a green pill. Being hungry, he took it and swallowed it. It gave him energy, and then he asked a very important question. If there aren't any kids in this world, then how do you know about them? If you follow me, I will take you to our museum and show you wax figures of children. Suggested the most venerable Greedos. So Joe Wyson followed his guide down the main street of the city, and all he noticed were old men. It seemed they were identical, as though they had all come from the same mold. Finally, they stopped in front of a building which had a small sign, Museum of Children. They entered it, and then Joe Wyson was happy. Good to see kids again, even if they aren't real. You came here to get away from them. Pointed out the learned historian Herosis. But we understand life is that way. You never want what you've got. You always want something else. Then, when you get the something else you want, you find you didn't want it in the first place. The wax figures were shockingly lifelike. There were figures of boys playing baseball, boys playing football, boys fishing on the side of a riverbank, and boys with their parents. Those two statues look like my twins, Stevie and Donnie. Said Joe Wyson as he opened his mouth in amazement. But why are they crying? You should know the answer. Replied the most venerable Greedos. They are crying because their father ran away. They won't be able to learn to ice skate or swim. They need their father. But he was very selfish. He just wanted to be peaceful and get some rest. I want my kids. Shouted Joe Wyson. This is a crazy world. You've got to have kids around, even if they do make a lot of noise and give you a headache. I'm going back. He closed his eyes and felt as though he were being hurled through space. When he opened them, he was again in Dr. Porter's office. I gotta go home to my kids. World without children would be terrible. The daddy was now at home and in his easy chair. On his right knee was Stevie, and on his left knee was Donnie. Then 30 seconds later, he watched both kids fight, but he was happy. He knew it was no dream. A world without children. Why? Because he had to stop at the barber shop and have his long white beard removed before coming home. The End